No polar bears were harmed in the making of this YouTube video. Donate to the Zombie Polar Bear Protection Fund today. Oh yes! We're finally here. This is what we all signed up for. Beyond the Wall. You know, the one with the dumb plot and the pointless conflicts and wait, that describes the entire season. Oh sure, some of the dialogue is fun or even compelling and there's a lot of dumb spectacle to direct your mouth breathing at, but mostly it's a hollow, contrived, tedious mess of missed potential. I wonder if this will become a trend. Da! 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 Beyond the Wall opens on a slow pan over the unpainted table for some reason. Snow trekking across a wilderness. Okay, okay, okay. I spot ten esteemed individuals on the mission. We know of John, Tormund, Jorah, Beric, Thoris, Sandor, and the Flash, which means the other three are wildlings from Eastwatch. For posterity's sake, we'll be keeping track of how many times these three wildlings can get killed over the course of this episode. It's truly impressive. Never seen snow before. The first couple of lines establish just how out of his element Gendry is. It's good to quickly set up how your characters are suited to a situation, but it's important to not blatantly contradict that half an hour later. I'm not sure how everyone is keeping up with Gendry, by the way, given his legendary speed. You're the fastest. John and Tormund argue about where the North ends, which is fine, yeah, they can do that. Smart people don't come up here looking for the dead. Yeah, I've been saying that the whole time! Man's Raider was a great man. Proud man. Right. Fuck my bride. Proud man. Have you morons seen your own fucking show? How many of his people died for his pride? Like, none? Mance didn't bend the knee to Stannis, and this directly led to the deaths of nobody. All the wildling deaths since then, Hardhome, Bastard Bowl, and yeah, that's pretty much it. None of it had anything to do with Mance being dead. And if he did bend over for Stannis, which I one day intend to, the Free Folk would have been used in his campaign for the North and probably the rest of Westeros after that. How the fuck could they have written this line for Tormund? Speedy Gonzalez is still mad at Beric and Thoris, which is entirely sensible, and these otherwise moral characters do not apologise at all for selling him into slavery. It's a little fucked. She stripped me naked. Sounds all right so far. He's totally underage. She's taking advantage of him. We need to track this student down and give him his luckiest boy in America medal right away. Jesus Christ, Sandor tells Gendry to stop complaining about being raped. Like, it makes sense that the Hound would say something like this, edgy meme lord that he is, but it's kind of gross that the show never sees fit to have an actual discussion on these things. Is the show's commentary that male victims aren't supported, particularly by other men? Is it the horrendous take that rape should make you stronger? Or is there no commentary at all? Then why include Sandor in the conversation? I just think it's kind of gross that the writers have him interrupt and shut down what could have been an interesting discussion. So anyway, how much time is supposed to be passing? Who are all these people and what, like, supplies have they brought with them? They opted not to bring any mounts or pack animals, so did they expect this to take the better part of an afternoon? Did Bran's letter tell them exactly where he saw the army and how far north of the wall it was, or are they just kind of guessing? They're walking past entire CG mountain ranges, so I have to assume it's at least a day. John and Jorah have a decent conversation about their fathers. Really, some of these little chats are perfectly fine and make sense. Of course these characters were talking about these things. I mean, it's a little odd that they didn't talk about this shit on the voyage from Dragonstone to Eastwatch. Actually, I take it back. We should have had the scene on the ship where some of this happens, especially this. Here, take this priceless artifact. No, I couldn't possibly. Anyone else wonder how Longclaw's inheritance works out in the end? Because John is exiled back to the wall and Jorah's dead, where's it go when John dies? Bran? Any living Mormon? Narth? Your children after you. This is weird. Jor is a little old and obsessed with Danny, sure, but he can still have children, unless his dick crumbled to the grayscale, I guess. Just ask Sam. Back at the center of the universe, Arya tells a story about how Ned never stopped her from being herself. It's a cute little story, but it's framed to make Ned look like the most progressive feudal lord ever by being vaguely critical of societal gender roles. The rules were wrong. This is simply not the case. Sure, by the time he died, Ned never forced Arya to fill the role of a typical noble woman, but he did have those aspirations for her. You will marry a high lord and rule this castle, and your sons shall be knights and princes and lords. And he eventually let her do what she wanted because she was his child and he loved her, but initially he was shocked by the idea of her fighting. This is no toy. Ned Stark, ladies and gentlemen, feminist icon. Can I be lord of a hold fast? <laughs> I was doing what I was meant to be doing. Little lady shouldn't play with swords. And he knew it. I was doing what I was meant to be doing. What are you doing with that son? And he knew it. Can I be Lord? 
I was doing what I was meant to be doing and he knew it. Edward Stark is such a perfectly written character that it is absolutely shocking that they would retcon him just for the purpose of what exactly? What does this accomplish? Aya could have told any story about Ned and the scene is exactly the same. You can have a progressive or feminist lord or whatever in your story, sure, that's fucking fine, but don't lie to us about a character that we knew. Anyway, Aya accuses Sansa of killing Ned. <clears throat> Contrived. Adjective. Obviously planned or forced. Artificial. Strained. Labored. Okay, so PD's plan was to um, find the letter and like lure Aya into taking it by being super obvious so that she would like um, read it, thus manipulating her to. Uh... So, keeping in mind that Peter doesn't know Aya at all, what's the next step in his master plan? Is it 1. Aya immediately decides to kill Sansa as vengeance for Ned? B. Aya immediately decides to kill both Peter and Sansa? 3. Aya actually thinks to ask the evidence machine that Peter knows about? Or D, Aya decides to weirdly confront Sansa after telling her a flimsy story about how their father was woke. So even though Littlefinger must know that the letter didn't work on Rob, seeing as he immediately mobilised his troops after receiving it, he expects it to work on Aya and it fucking does! They forced me to do it. Did they? With a knife at your throat? Basically, yeah! They told me it was the only way to save father. And you were stupid enough to believe them. And you're stupid enough to fall for this. We're standing in Winterfell again because of me. Rickon's dead because of you. John didn't win it back. He lost the Battle of the Bastards. Also your fault. Please go on. You never would have survived what I survived. My trauma's better than your trauma. I was raped, so I'm stronger than you. Checkmate, atheists. I can't believe Littlefinger's plan is actually working, and neither can he. Who did you show it to? Well, she sure as fuck didn't show it to Bran. In fact, if you're so smart, why didn't you tell Arya to talk to Bran? Right now! He would clear this up instantly. Guess he's busy though, you know, reading the script or whatever. Back at the other place, they've been walking for somewhere in the ballpark of two hours to six years. Hi, doggy. Gingers are beautiful. Aww. Somehow, dick is the one word Tormund has never heard before. Dick. I like it. Bet you do. Tormund fawns over Brienne, and yeah, it's adorable, but it's basically fan service. They turned a cheeky gag from Christopher into a core tenet of the character's personality. So not only does Tormund not remember Mance, he also isn't upholding the customs of the culture he supposedly loves so passionately by not kidnapping the woman he wants. If a man wants a woman, he has to prove he'll give her strong and cunning sons. When she tries to slit his throat, he don't let her. With the free folk, you get what you can take and you keep what you can hold. You're with Brienne of fucking Toth. Well, not with her yet. When she tries to slit his throat, he don't let her. Not with her yet. Nonetheless, it's a fun interaction. If I could get over how dumb this mission is, I'd probably be enjoying myself right now. Beric and John have a chat about how they're both alive. It's pretty cool, and I love Beric, but they don't really talk about what it's like to die, which I count as a missed opportunity. He wants you alive. Why? So you can scream at a dragon while Arya kills your father, duh. Would have been neat to involve Thoros in this too. He's kind of wasted in this episode as a whole, really. He's only here so he can die, which I guess raises the stakes later. It's weird that nobody asked him to not come because it's too dangerous and his power is too important. That's what I saw on the fire. Yep, they have no idea where they're going. Also, Bran's ravens didn't see the Arrowhead Mountain, so I'd, I don't know, man. Heroes do stupid things and they die. Um... Drogo, Jorah, Dario, even this... Jon Snow. Recall, if you will, what you did mere episodes ago. Heroes do stupid things and they die. I don't know if Danny is self-aware at this moment or just a moron. Drogo, Jorah, Dario, even this... Jon Snow. They all fell in love with you. Ew, oh, gross. Also, when? When did Tyrion observe Jon staring longingly at Danny enough times to constitute a concrete belief that he's in love with her? Could we have perhaps seen this occurring? That would have been nice. I know you're brave. I wouldn't have chosen a coward as my hand. Let's have a look at Tyrion's kill list. Strangled a half-asleep lady in bed, shot an old man on the toilet, snuck up on the Daenerys plot and stabbed it in the back. Tyrion's bravery ended at the Blackwater, and I'm pretty sure we're supposed to think that standing next to the battlefield at the Rush was perfectly safe somehow. Anyone touches you, King's Landing burns down to the Foundation Stones. Tens of thousands will die in the firestorm. You're not here to be Queen of the Ashes. Anyone touches you, King's 
And right now she's thinking about to set a trap. No, that doesn't sound like Cersei. Cersei's a very straightforward, non-duplicitous person who never hides her intentions. You must be thinking of some other character from some better show. Which war was won without deceit and mass murder? Aegon's War for the North. Next. Tyrion advises Danny that she can lose her temper and cites roasting Randy and Penis as an example. That was not impulsive. That was necessary. Stuff can be two things. Also, what the fuck are you talking about? Of course it wasn't necessary. You're just plain silly. Tyrion's all like, bro, we could have just taken a bit of time to chill before acting and that's enough for Danny to accuse him of treason. One could be forgiven for thinking you're taking your family's side in this debate. I yeah, what temper? The issue of succession comes up because Danny could die. This angers her as up until now there has been no proof that she can die and a mounting stack of evidence to the contrary. Is this one of the items you discussed with your brother in King's Landing? If you had an issue with Tyrion in talking to Jamie, then why did you let him? Just send someone else. Or you could have taken Jamie prisoner at the end of that battle. How did he even avoid you, by the way? Sorry, I forgot we were supposed to ignore that! So this scene was basically just two idiots trying to figure out which one is the bigger idiot. The results were inconclusive. Back beyond the wall, the stupidest thing we could think of happens, but first let's talk about weaponry. Knowing that they haven't started reforging the obsidian yet, the only effective weapons they have are Valyrian steel, the Watcher's dragon glass daggers, and fire. So so John's good, Beric's good, Thoris is good, and we see Jorah with a dagger later, but the others are just using regular ass axes and swords. And Lightning McQueen's hammer? Did John never explain the weapons they can and cannot use? Oop, one wildling death, and surely this is a second. Don't you love how they run up to the white with flaming swords and don't immediately just lightly brush their swords against it? Gotta be a third death. Yes, I finally got to do it. You see, all through these two seasons of Piss Takes, I've wanted to include a floating disembodied Colin Mockery head. But due to both time restraints and budgetary considerations, we could never do it. But after nagging the producers for over a year, they finally let me do it. In fact, there was enough room in the budget for me to superimpose a floating disembodied Colin Mockery head onto every character. As you can plainly see, adding this dumb fucking waste of time and money to my show for no reason other than my own childish fantasy to see dumb shit on screen has paid off with dividends, you fucking hacks! Thoros takes the bullet for Rin Tin Tin, which is like just so dumb. Wouldn't it be sick if Sandor died and Thoros brought him back as a fire white? Get some delicious irony going there, bring his fear full circle. Then you can kill Thoros later at the frozen lake if you really want to. It's just really fucking dumb that the white mage would throw himself to near certain death like this. He should be the last person to willingly die. Anyway, it was nice of the bear to kill three unimportant people first, especially fortunate too, considering that these wildlings are actually an advanced species of fungus that merely resemble wildlings. They grow along the wall at Eastwatch as the unique climate of the far north meeting the Shivering Sea is ideal for their growth. They reproduce asexually and near instantaneously and commit off-screen suicide as the screenwriters require. <laughs> So Gendry, Beric and Tormund were standing right there but needed to wait like 20 seconds for Jorah to come and stab the bear for them. Cool. Back with the winter fellas, Sansa confides in Littlefinger about how Arya is a stinky poo face. So Littlefinger wants to drive a wedge between the Stark siblings because if they unite and form a wolf tron then his boning status upgrades from pending to in progress. However he knows that Bran knows everything. His genius workaround for this is to simply bribe the writers into removing him from this episode. Where did she get it? If if only there was someone in the castle whose duties included keeping records of things like this. If such a person existed, perhaps they would be able to assist, but alas, Sansa is left to her own definitely smart devices. Their loyalty is to John. Right, except the people who explicitly told you otherwise. We did not choose you to rule us, but perhaps we should have. Their loyalty... The Knights of the Vale came here for you. Their loyalty is to John. What the heck are you talking about? know her anymore. You never knew her. Perhaps Lady Brienne could help. She's sworn to protect both of Catelyn Stark's girls. Is she not? She is. I mean... No. Catelyn asked her to get her daughters back in exchange for Jamie, but that was off screen, so we don't know the deets there. Then when she swore to Jamie in season four, they thought Arya was dead, so she wasn't included. And then when she swore to Sansa in season six, she knew Arya was alive, but didn't mention her. More to the point though, Peter brings up Brienne to intervene in this contrived conflict he's set up. Shouldn't he want Sansa to not seek help from an outside power that he hasn't yet manipulated? In seasons five and six, I was upset that Littlefinger wasn't doing any intrigue, but now that they're shown 
given me this? Please go back to doing nothing with him. Incredibly, there are still 10 of them, and they haven't got to that mountain from Google Images yet. Jorah and Thoros talk about Pike, which makes sense. Cool. Tormund's fucking spidey senses start tingling and he finds like a small contingent of whites on a patrol or something. I guess they lay a trap for this white walker by making a fire? Couldn't you have just not done that and caught them even more off guard? What was the fucking point of this? <laughs> Imagine keeping the element of surprise though. How is Sonic the Hedgehog's hammer doing anything? Or Tormund's axe for that matter. Ah, oh, so it's like the droid control ships in The Phantom Menace, except there it was actually previously established that shit worked like that, and here it just suddenly happens because it's convenient. Now this is pod racing. So all the whites die except this one stays alive for some reason? That's fucking handy. You know what? He do be kinda cute though. I'm gonna call him Boots. It's funny, I seem to recall times when white walkers were killed and their vassal whites weren't destroyed. I must be misremembering, silly me. An addiction to amnesia water will do that. No seriously, why the fuck is this one alive? Is it like a proximity thing or do they die if the guy they were raised by dies? So did a shit ton of whites elsewhere just suddenly die? Was Boots the only one in this troop that wasn't raised by that guy? The chances! But we've only ever seen the Night King himself raise whites, so what the fuck is going on anyway? Boots is understandably displeased and screams for help. Whoops. We might be in trouble here, guys. Run back to Eastwatch. Get a raven to Daenerys. Tell her what's happened. Hey, so remember when the Night's Watch went on the Great Ranging and brought like a shit ton of ravens with them for the express purpose of informing other people of super important developments and shit? The exact kind of thing that's happening right now? Maybe we should have done that. Hey, remember those ravens Bran had flying beyond the wall literally last episode? Wonder what they're up to now. Hey, remember Bran? Where's Bran? Hey, remember Omniscience? Hey, remember the plot? John is the fourth smartest person in the multiverse and has the sudden realization that Gendry is so fast, oh my god guys, but do you know what's faster? Horses, elk, velociraptors. <laughs> Here, give me your hammer so that you're faster. Also, let's quickly shave your head so you're more aerodynamic. Do you know how much drag is produced? They've got to go too. The frozen lake was right fucking there. It took them four seconds to get to it. Is the implication that Rhaegar laid that troop of whites as a trap? So was it important that Boots called for help or was it dumb luck or what? I mean, this is the same place that Bran saw them from. So was this whole fucking thing his plan? Spooking Bran so some insane people tried to go up there to get a dead guy to convince Maleficent, I mean Cersei, to not? Because that's one hell of a leap. Is the Night King also omniscient? Maybe he could help sort out the tiff Arya and Sansa are having. Oh yeah, and that makes four. do that? How far had they gone? How long has it been? Time is important and I am a clock. Siri, what's frostbite? And then in the next scene, he's already at the wall fucking lol, which is why people are so annoyed by this. You could have easily paced the episode differently and put a Winterfell scene between these bits so it feels like some time has passed, instead of Gendry using instant fucking transmission. Run back to Eastwood. Get a raven to Daenerys. Tell her what's happened. Dave was awake and ready and watching in the middle of the night, I guess, whatever. Good morning, everybody. How is everyone's skin not like blue? <laughs> Take that, the plot. Thoros is frozen to death because this would be too easy otherwise. So why did the NK not wake Thoros up to kill the other five and the 10,000 wildling fungi they have with them, like immediately? Is it because he can't fuck with a servant of the Lord of Light? John seems to think that doesn't matter, but if that's so, then why hasn't he already been raised? He's definitely within distance. There's no time for any of this. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize. Yep, that is definitely not enough alcohol to do this. Thoros goes out the way he lived, doused in alcohol and burning uncontrollably. Hell yeah. Sure Surely one of these guys has needed to take a dump during this time. Do they just do it out in the open in front of everyone or let it roll down their pants? Maybe he was the one who turned them. Yeah, maybe. We can go for the walkers. Maybe we'll stand a chance. No, we need to take that thing back with us. Okay, that actually makes sense. John doesn't want to kill any more walkers so that Boots stays animated, but just remember this line for later, plus. Beric reckons maybe they want to end this war now, even though we're slated for another season. Kill him. He turned them all. Could you possibly know that? Still works. The Lord brought you back. Did he do it to watch us freeze to death? No, I told you earlier he did it so that John could yell at a dragon. Haven't you been listening? Maybe the Lord brought me here to find it. This is good foreshadowing that Beric will duel the Night King, which in turn is foreshadowing that foreshadowing has gone out the window. Oh God, we're back at fucking... Just get on with it. My lady. My lady. My lady, you are the lady of... My lady. My lady. You are the lady of... My lady. Winterfell. You are the lady of... My lady. Sansa gets invited to the big dumb meeting and refuses to go because she can just 
watch it on Branavision without having to get out of her chair. It's not safe leaving you with Littlefinger. So Sansa's believing Peter at the moment, right? And Peter basically said that Brienne would prevent the sisters from harming each other and Arya has already threatened Sansa. Then why would she send Brienne away? Isn't the logical conclusion from Peter's advice to tell Brienne that Arya threatened you? It just feels like nobody thought this through. The character or writer. Let me at least leave Podrick behind to watch over you. He has become a competent source. I do not need to be watched over or minded or cared for. I'm not a child, I'm a lady of Oh, that's funny. I swore an oath to protect you and your sister. Did you though? The trip to King's Landing is long. Is it though? Dragonstone. Okay, this has gotten out of hand and we need to talk about it now. I've gone out of my way in previous videos to say that I'm deriding specifically the writing of this show and praised pretty much every other aspect of the production. That being said, and with all due respect, what the glam rock fuck is Daenerys wearing? Did she take the time to put this on after receiving the letter because she thought white would look better in the north? Was this designed to be worn on Dragonback or is it her queenly regalia? Was it designed in the three weeks to eight months she He's been on Dragonstone? The most important person in the world can't fly off to the most dangerous place in the world. But I thought Missande was the most important person in the world. You told me to do nothing before and I listened to you. Nah, not it. Tyrion's sad because this is his fucking fault. You could have used Jamie. There was no need for any of this. But you know, we finally had the polar bear money in the budget, so we had to go back beyond the wall. Oh my god, they're serious about doing this fucking zombie bear. In the nicest possible way, fuck, fuck you. you. Day eight, stuck on the frozen lake. So Sandor is a big Fucking idiot. Dumb cunt. God damn it, we want the zombie polar bear. Dumb. If he can throw this far, then why can't the Whites, who have previously demonstrated abnormal strength? How had they not tried walking forward yet? It's been three weeks, I've just decided. There are so many of them, and the Night King is a strategist of some kind, right? Or was he just waiting until Danny was close enough to start this so he could have the dragon? But then why is it dependent on the Hound throwing a rock? The thing is, it's left ambiguous if this is his plan or not, but either way, it just doesn't make sense. We knew that the Night King would, would see and seize this opportunity. Jon stands up in this shot, but in the next shot he's sitting down again and then he's back up. Why do you have any non-dragon glass weapons? Why are you using that hammer? Why haven't they just broken the lake again? It's clearly not too thick. Just keep doing that until Danny shows up. Ah, oh, well, I guess the big dumb fight is happening. And I guess that's five. All the main characters save each other's bums, but they know that the wildlings are self-replenishing like the shield in Halo, so whatever. <laughs> If the water isn't a problem for them, then why do they stand fucking still for the six months it took for Danny to fly there? You fucking morons! The Whites are too taken by Tormund's beauty to strike or bite him more, so they just drag him until Sandor can save him. Then there goes the sixth wildling. Jon waits to strike so Danny can have a big old dramatic entrance. The coincidence of her arriving right now is fucking unbelievable, and I mean that. If the end of a journey that long occurred at the exact moment of a battle that started because of something random happening in real life, I would have no choice but to believe that our universe is being written by a team of drunks who just don't give a shit anymore and want to rush out and work on a Star War. Now would be a great time to find out if Dragonfire can kill the walkers, oh well. Thank fuck you came! Did you bring Bran? Why are you doing this just now? Why didn't you kill Jon and the rest of them earlier? Jon, why are you still fighting, you fucking moron? No, seriously, there is no reason for this and it is laughably stupid. Youch. He throws the spear like a mile? This is sad though, not gonna lie but it is the big dumb. Jon decides to stay and kill the Night King even though We need to take that thing back with us. You could have made this Beric's heroic last stand. I hate everything that happens in this episode. Jon takes a tumble into some death water and the dragons leave. Jorah has a oh no he's a gonna fall off moment because of course he fucking does. Jon should be dead so did Melisandre teleport here as well? I really thought she was gone this time. Holy shit this is how she comes from the north in the long night. Good thing these wildling cloaks are apparently hydrophobic. Good thing I resurfaced next to my magic sword. Good thing I'm... I'm... I'm blacking out. Help. This episode, it's... it's too much for me. I can't take it anymore. Goliath. Huh? Goliath. Who... who is that? Goliath. It is I. Uncle Benjamin, is that you? Uh, yeah, let go with that. But how? Dude, just come on. I'm trying to save you here. But I haven't seen you since season one. Quickly, take my horse. There's no time. No, I'm pretty sure there's enough time for both of us to no, get No, there, is, there really is no time. But no, about, there's they're, no they're time. still coming. There, can, there's, there's plenty no of time, time at all. What are you talking about? 
Hey, do you know who my real parents are? Uh, it really doesn't matter. Just go yell at a dragon. It's it's your destiny. Go, go on. Thank you, Uncle Benjamin. Get. I love you. Get out of here. I'll never bring you up again. Get out of here. Guys, I'm I'm pretty sure that was Internet Historian. What is this? A crossover episode? I mean, him showing up makes as much sense as Benjamin showing up, so... Boy, and I thought Danny showing up was a miraculous coincidence. This is so fucking stupid, it's almost a literal deus ex machina. What a waste. What a waste of an epic heroic stand. It's a waste of Benjamin. It's a waste of the Night King. It's a waste of an episode. So much could have been explained in this episode. So much could have been developed. But we had the money for for a zombie polar bear, so there was no other way. <laughs> Back at Dumb Watch, the fellas part ways. Boots is coming with Sandor, Tormund and Beric are staying. The fucking moment Danny decides to leave, John shows up. What the hell is this plot? John's been stabbed to death and Danny finds that hot. I believe the message here is that women are complicated. At Winterfell, nothing continues to happen, but it's happening very quickly. Sansa is just as good at going through people's terribly hidden shit as Arya is. Why does she want her to find them? Why is any of this happening? Are they just pretending to hate each other to entertain Littlefinger? He's not even in the fucking room. Not what you're looking for. Yeah, um, what were you looking for? Also, why did Arya take the letter if she didn't want Peter to know that she knew about it? Why is everyone here so fucking dumb? Ah, but she did want him to know. She was only pretending to be denser than lead. We're gonna have to go over this again in full next episode anyway, so why am I even fucking bothering? The world doesn't just let girls decide what they're going to be. Oh, it's about... Girls! Nihilistic assassins are, and always have been, the real feminists. That lady shouldn't play with swords. I could even become you. This is actually a really cool idea, and Aya is a psychopath again for this scene, but she's just kidding! Haha, <laughs> I gotcha! So glad this doesn't go anywhere. This is so fucking confusing, it didn't make sense at the time, and it doesn't make sense in retrospect. Yeah, bet you feel like a fucking idiot for sending Brienne away now, don't you? Hey! Jono wakes up and apologises to Danny for Viserion's death, even though it's only like one third his fault, maximum. They're all hand holding now, too. It's fucking disgusting. I wish we'd never gone. But, John, without the white, we'd never be able to pointlessly convince Cersei that you're fighting a two front war, thus giving her a massive military advantage. Thank you, Danny. What the fuck? Here's the last person who called me that. Danny. My brother. Danny, tell them. I'm not the company you want to keep. Danny, please! Fuck you, I wish we had him instead of you. Not Danny. But why? My queen. But why? Bend the knee. But why? Is it the scars? You wanna know how I got them? Danny's boring and decides they shouldn't bang yet because Sam and Bran aren't ready for the reveal. For all you losers wondering where all these enormous steel chains came from, they've been there the whole time. There's some chains. Yep, some chains there too. There's plenty of chains all along. Honestly, if you're gonna do this scene at all, why isn't it a post credit scene? Those were all the rage in 2017, right? Dun dun dun! To see augmented chord. It's a nice hokey Terminator reveal, but the end of the next episode would be so much better without it. So this was the worst episode ever until the next worst episode ever, but the crazy thing is the Long Night flushes this turd right out of the loo. It's incredible. I've got the links, you know the ones. Tweet, tweet, bloop, bloop, bling, bling. Thanks to my private benefactors. For doing the thing. Thank you very much. I reckon it'll be another two weeks for the next one, okay? Wait, what the fuck happened to Bran? Thanks to gods for Gladys and his knees. It was fun. Voice acting. Who would have thought?